support wipe out in the Dudley West by-election was anything other than a kick in the teeth today. A very poor result was the Prime Minister's less colourful choice of words as he appealed for everyone to pull together. In fact, it was the worst Conservative by-election result for 60 years. The big question in all their minds is whether this is some all-time low from which, as more fruity MPs claim, they'll emerge, or whether it might get worse or stay the same. Make Mark Mardell now reports. Tonight, Dudley's new Labour MP got some much-needed rest and relaxation after the hell of fighting a by-election. But for Labour, Christmas has come early. Well, the people of Dudley West spoke for the nation on Thursday. They told this government that they want them out, and they also said that they wanted Tony Blair and new Labour in. This means, I think, meltdown for the Tories. John Major, in his constituency today, yet again found himself in a hole. One MP, not usually thought of as a dissident, told Newsnight that if the Prime Minister got any deeper into trouble, he'd go public and call for a change of leadership. But Mr Major was scanning the horizon for a silver lining. It was a poor result. But I think some good can come out of it, uh, providing people realise uh, within the Conservative Party that they must pull in the same direction for the same cause at the same time and against the same opponents, then I believe that will dramatically transform the political environment in the United Kingdom. There's no doubt a great deal is going right economically and in other ways, but that message simply isn't getting through to people at the moment. It's true. At the opinion pollsters and Morrie, they can find little evidence of the feel-good factor filtering through. Bob Worcester believes the record-breaking swing at Dudley is extremely serious news for the government. We're looking at a huge, huge change in people's voting behaviour. You add that, Dudley to the three previous by-elections, which all had big, big swings to the Liberal Democrats of comparable level, to the, to the horrible situation they were at the Europarliamentary elections, to the very poor local government elections, there are only two of the Shire counties where the county halls are now in Tory hands. And then the appalling opinion polls, you know, the electorate's trying to tell them something. Is anybody listening? Right. Mr Hanley says he is, but today was touring the TV and radio studios, touting the party chairman's traditional mantra about mid-term blues. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it was a very disappointing result last night, but uh, as we all know, it's extremely difficult for governments to hold on to seats mid-term in by-elections. Uh, that was the story of the last parliament, and it's the story of this. But It's a tempting line for Tories. When it came to the general election, those amazing by-election victories turned to dust and the seats returned to the Tories. Labour does have to be careful about complacency. We have been here before. Um, although this is a record uh, by-election uh, victory and a record swing, uh, it would be wrong to draw too wide conclusions about it. Uh, there are still huge battles about how Britain will be run, about issues like taxation, which dominated the last general election, none of which, it seems to me, were tested in Dublin. Sylvia Hill has a taste for Westminster after her brief spell as an MP, following her spectacular victory at the Mid-Staffordshire by-election but she refuses to believe that history will repeat itself. This time round, people who were perhaps tricked into believing what Major said, that he would not be putting up taxes, will not fall for that mistake again. The British people don't like to be tricked. They are angry at what has happened. The Conservative who took Midstaff's back is worried that his old opponent might be right. He's warning Mr Major he's got to have a radical rethink. There are many activists in the Conservative Party, we're the biggest party in the country, with over a million members, who've been saying to the leadership, look again at what grassroots Toryism is all about. Don't be dogmatic. It was dogma and splits that destroyed the Labour Party in the 70s. Well, the government knows we need a united party, but I do sometimes wonder whether the government falls into the trap of dogma. Tories who lost the whip are even more scathing. The problem is the Conservative government does not appear to be behaving as a Conservative government. People are, are voting Labour because they feel at least Labour is the genuine article. Uh, the Tories are a poor imitation of, of, of really socialist, uh, socialist administration. 
No, I think if we just uh, pull together in the wrong direction, it will be disastrous. What we need to do is set a new course back to conservatism as we've traditionally known it. The party machine is blaming this defeat on disunity, but some senior figures within it are saying the answer isn't for the rebels to shape up and fall in line, but for John Major to swallow his pride and move on to their agenda, if necessary, to rule out a single currency. So from some radical solutions, but from others, simply despair. One top Tory told me, the voters are bored with us, bored with our excuses, it's just hopeless. But it's only really hopeless for the Conservatives if protest voters stick with Labour. During the by-election campaign, Labour proudly paraded a group of former Tories to meet the man who'd stroke away their fears of the People's Party. Tonight, we asked them if they really were converts. It definitely wasn't a protest vote. I've actually said this before to someone who asked me. A lot of people think, yes, we will protest so that the government will shape themselves up. But definitely not. It was I am voting Labour. I trust them as much as I'm allowed in my own mind to trust them. Um, you've always got to think to yourself, well, perhaps they might do this, but I don't think they want to go back to sales to the old way. I think they know, they keep saying about this new Labour Party. It hasn't changed a great deal. It's still the Labour Party, but it's not the bad old days of the, uh, dare I say it, the Red Robos and the, the old things like that where people threaten to bring governments down because they didn't see their way or their point of view. I think those days have gone and they're best behind us. I've always voted Conservative ever since I've began to vote, since 1979, since I was eligible. Um, they were good years for me. I felt they were the party to vote for. But in recent months, I think they've lost their, their way. I think they're in the wilderness and I think we need a change. On his way to Westminster, the latest by-election victor is yet again the beneficiary of toy town politics. If ministerial blandishments are to be believed. If they're right, he'll be on his bike when voters have to make grown-up decisions about who runs the country. But tonight, Tories are just a little less confident about that argument. Well, we're joined now from Birmingham by one of the uh, rebels. The party machine is largely blaming for the loss last night, Nicholas Budgeon. Mr Budgeon, do you accept this defeat was at least in part your fault? No, I don't think so at all. Um, I think that uh, the broad mass of Conservative supporters uh, share our Eurosceptical view. So you think the fact that the party appears utterly disunited, went through a uh, crisis of confidence uh, with you, suffered another rebellion over VAT, that that had nothing to do with the voters' rejection of it last night? Um, well, um, I think that uh, the voters are saying that uh, in many instances they agree with those who had the misfortune to disagree with their party. Uh, I mean, if for the sake of argument that it, it was a, uh, a disagreement over whether the earth was flat or not, I don't think it would do any harm to the party at all. Uh, the reason that uh, there's a, a serious discussion in the party is that uh, the grassroots tend to be on our side. Norman Fowler, in an article that he wrote today, the former party chairman, uh, quotes figures saying that uh, almost 70% of people agreed with Tony Blair's description of the party in the Commons as an ill-disciplined rabble. That is referring to you and people like you, isn't it? Well, um, I, I don't think that's so. Um, I think it was very unfortunate that uh, uh, the vote on the extra money for Europe was made a vote of confidence. All right, the well, what's the price for getting you back on board? Well, there's no price at all, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, I didn't resign the whip. I think it was unwise to manoeuvre us into the position in which we were manoeuvred. If we are offered the whip back, I'm sure that all of us would be very pleased to accept it. Without the party changing any of its policies on Europe? Oh, well, obviously we'll, we shall continue to argue our point of view. Um, are, are you saying that we ought to uh, be completely silent if uh, the whip was given back to us? No, but some people suggest, for example, that uh, you would be uh, delighted to reach some sort of deal if the party would only make a commitment to ruling out a single currency. We're not, we're not, as far as, I mean, we're, we're not a party within a party, and, but uh, speaking only for myself, I would say that I think that it was uh, very unwise to go in for this uh, thoroughly untory manoeuvre, uh, that it was uh, silly to have, uh, uh, have taken the whip from us, um, if, it is if it is offered back to me, I shall accept it immediately. Of course, I shall go on arguing my point within the party that I believe that uh, a firmer line towards Europe is necessary.